You're perfect right now. I love what you're doing. This looks perfect. What it doesn't look like, now do the imperfect, right? Pack up my bags. <laughs> What am I doing wrong? Huh? I'm not seated. Am I learning? No, what am I trying to do? Right, not gonna work. Won't happen, okay? Now, but sometimes some people like to take just a little that extra step. For example, they'll start, they'll, let me stay seated, but they'll do this. <laughs> now, was that right? What was I doing? Right, packing up. Are we supposed to be packing up? That's great. So anyone just sit like you are? That. This is what it looks like when the bell rings. When I say dismissed, then feel free to pack up, okay? You guys got it? So again, I gave them a perfect demonstration. I'm going to practice it. Very easy to do, right? Gave them the imperfect demonstration and then the almost but not quite right. There's no question in their mind what I want, right? How often do we do this? Right, as often as you have to. Do I have to reteach every once in a while? The first time the kids are, oh, I'm so sorry. You know what? Uh, Megan here, uh, she forgot all the rules. Everyone have a seat? And this is during their four minutes. I give them another teach too. I've only had to do this maximum three times. And then for the rest of the school year, they don't pack up. They just sit there. And then I, and later on, I do, you know, I do all these things. to come back in the hallway and then, some of the other teachers are going, oh, you did that, you did that military thing. <laughs> yeah, they're all commandos. Yeah. <laughs> what? I just taught the expectation so that they completely understand, without a shadow of a doubt, what's expected of them. So let's walk through this, because there's a method to, to creating your own teacher. Because here's the thing, what bugs you doesn't bug me. What bugs you doesn't bug me. Might bug her, might bug you, might not bug you, right? It's different things. This is, and there's two types of teachers, by the way. Um, when I go to districts, I teach them, I teach what's called a common area or a public area teach twos, which means all the teachers have to buy into it, but the change they see in the whole school is amazing because they're told right at the bat. As an example, I go to one school, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, that's in middle school, and I was there for uh, their lunchtime duties. And the teachers are all standing on the side, which I thought was sad, it's no wrong, not wrong, maybe. Kids, you know, and they'll stand aside, the kind of like, you know, guards, and you know, just wait for them. Okay. They wait, and then when they're done, right, they're done, they bring the garbage can up, they start carrying, you know, cleaning the table. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're missing out on an opportunity here. So they can, hey, they're picking up the empty. <coughs> if my little kindergartner can do it, they can do it, right? That was the first time. They were so thankful they were doing that. So the very beginning, the very first lunches that they had, Hey guys, we realized that it's been going on this year, but I need it before they even got food. They were cutting it at that time. So I need you to pay attention. Or like, <laughs> you know, hungry. And they gave it to each two. This is what we do. One person from the table, you determine right off the bat, where they had like a, a tri I think some tables had like a triangle. That person, if you do that, you go get the garbage can, bring it in, and then you sit. As soon as your mouths are closed and done, you release that table. Now it took them about three, four days, but after that, and then parents were doing crazy things like, hey, you know, he, he came home and cleaned the table off. <laughs> <laughs> you people teach in there. <laughs> hey, right? So that's a common area one. But you start small, we start with the classroom. Figure out, and think about it for a second, the things that trying to drive you bonkers. So this guy just, just revs me up. It could be something as, as little as how you turn in paperwork. You know, how you turn in your homework, that kind of thing. It could be how you participate in class. It could be how you complete a particular form. Okay? How you share in class. But the teachers, I did a big one on buses. Oh, it was great. And the kids that attended it, it was perfect. But they th understood the teaching. So let's talk about the actual, you know, get deeper into the, how you develop a teacher. Here. As an example, here's one on listening, right? There's three elements to it. Goals, the rationale, and the expected learning behavior. Mm -hmm. The goal is, and by the way, this is shared with the kids. It's not a big secret. Hey guys, I need you to be really good listeners. Why? Because if you're not listening, you're not learning. We have to listen to each other. We have to listen to who's ever here up speaking. It could be me, or it could be one of your classmates. But if we're not listening, we gotta make sure this happens, right? So what we're gonna do is, 
Why, I want to do it because we've got to be good listeners. And if you're a good listener, you're going to be successful in life. Okay, we'll go. To understand the material that's being presented, because you may have to take a test on it. It's important. We're not here just wasting time. And then you want to create a cooperative environment. And if we're not listening, we're not going to be able to work together. I also want to increase the amount of time that we teach, because some of you might not get things right off the bat. But I can't do that if we're not all listening. Does that make sense? I'm also trying to drive a little bit of buy-in, right? And I don't want you guys to be frustrated. Is there anything worse than someone not listening to you? It goes for me, too. So this is why we're going to do this. So you give them the goals, the rationale, and then here's the expected learning behavior. Now this is, I'm going to sit down and go, OK, what is it that drives me crazy? What would be perfect? And I write out, everything is perfect. And by the way, set your expectations high. Set your expectations high. There's a school I work with in, uh, well, in Fresno, and a school I work with in New Mexico. You go down the hallways, they all do this huge teach you about hallway behavior. It's crazy weird. It's awesome. But when you first walk in, you're like, what happened? One's in elementary school, and they walk down the halls like this. And I thought I walked to, to maybe a monastery or something. I didn't. It was silent. It was quiet. The kids were going on. And it was like, and as they would come out in the, outside from the classroom to the hallway, I'm like, who? Whoa! Perfect teachers. Because the whole building said, you know what? It is getting crazy out there. We need to be able to hear each other. And that's what they did. But they had to write down, what is the expected behavior? What do we want to see them do? And they never said the one word. Well, they should know by now. Know what? How to behave in a hallway? Who taught them that? Son, before you go to class today, before you go to school today, I want to teach you how to behave in a hallway. That didn't happen. <laughs> you're lucky if they say, you know, when you're in a public bathroom, this is what you should do. <laughs> that conversation hardly ever happens either as well, right? So you have to teach them the expected behavior and very explicit. The more explicit, the better off you're going to be. Okay? Now, so that's how the, the initial part will be. From that, you're going to make three columns. Okay? The positive, exact example. We've kind of already done that, right? Talk about exactly the behavior I want to see. And then start thinking about the absolute opposite. <laughs> this is not what I want to see. And make a list there. And you share that with the kids. This is not what I want to see. Do you let the kids practice that? No. I, I demonstrate that as a teacher. The kids will only do the positive and perfect, okay? And then finally, I'll sit down and think about what's the, you know, what's the edge testers? What are the little things that they do that just try to, you know, just ratchet it up? And I show those the same thing. Now, the reason why I do it the way I do it, I do it this way because I said, well, you know, what did I do wrong this last, this last row? You know, what did I, and then what did I do right? To show that what, will, what you'll see almost right off the bat is some kids, um, they'll come in and they'll start doing it. They go, that's not happening. They'll start correcting each other. Why? Because they know they caught on. They know the expected behavior. The cool thing is halfway through the school year, I get a new kid in. Hey, come on in. You know what? You did so well. You know, you're, you're my master trainer. You are my master trainer for our teacher for listening. Could you take her to the back real quick and, and do a teach to with her? I'd love to, but she comes good. Wow. Kids teaching kids. Wouldn't want to give them their voice, would we? There you go. So you get that? That's the two segments. So the first segment is the goals, rationale, and the expected learning behavior. And from that, you create three lists a positive, a negative, and the almost but not quite. Okay? 